What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be going over the Bargainer statue, the Poe exchange system, the location of the Bargainer statues, and the specific armor that you can get from them in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> If you've progressed, I don't know, like three hours into the game, including the tutorial, then you've probably seen this statue here, and you may have seen it when Joshua over here asked you to go into the depths for the first time and you collected your first Poe. I've yet to interact with them so that I could do it here on video. Swordsman, are you okay over there? You look like you were just somewhere else right now. Oh, I bet you're interested in that strange stone, huh? We discovered it in the depths. It looks both naturally formed and as though it's been carved into. We don't know much about it, as you could probably tell. There's still so much to learn. So once I'm done with my current investigation, I plan to start digging into it more. Sup. You who stand before me. I'm the one who returns Pose to the afterlife where they belong. Offer Pose to me. They are the spirits that ought to return to the afterlife. Um, okay. Here's a Poe for you. Oh! This is indeed a Poe. What pitiful beings these are. They have lost their way home and wander the depths of this land. I have returned the lost spirit to the afterlife where it belongs. Since I was brought here to the surface, I have been unable to return Poe's to the afterlife. Because of you, I can assist them once again. You should take this. That's a clump of dark. Thanks. If you offer me more pose, I will give you suitable compensation. From here, you're going to be able to take a look at the different items that he's going to be having, which is including dark clumps, muddle buds, puff shrooms, and bomb flowers. This is more or less so that after you're done with all of the large collectibles, that he's going to be able to offer you something in exchange. You're also going to notice on here is the dark tunic. So this is how you're going to be able to get dark link. And then after you speak to more and more bargainer statues, you're going to be able to unlock more and more pieces of the dark armor as well as a brand new armor introduced in Tears of the Kingdom. My brethren, whose spirits reside in the statues far larger than mine, are in the depths of this land. If you encounter my brethren, try offering pose to them. Where are they? If I offer you 10 pose, I will tell you the location of my brethren. Uh, don't do that, because I'm going to tell you where they are, because pose are kind of a pain to get. And yeah, I'm just going to tell you tell you where all they are. So this one here in Lookout Landing counts as the first of the seven. If you make your way down into the depths to the Great Abandoned Central Mine, there's going to be a large bargainer statue down there located right here. There's a long overarching side quest involved with this that starts at the Temple of Time Ruins, which I've put out a video on. Boop. Great, that's that in the corner. Yeah, feel free to do this as your first one or your last one, but if you do it as your first one, you get a heart container or stamina vessel, so you may want to do it first. From here, there's going to be five more randomly spread all throughout the depths. The first one that we're going to be making our way to is called the Plains Bargainer Statue, and it's located pretty much underneath the Riverside Stable. There's also going to be a shrine over here next to it, so that's going to serve as our light route base. It's also worth noting that this river here persists in the underground, so because of that, you're much better off navigating from Hyrule Field than one of the other chasms that may appear closer. So I'm going to go ahead to this light route, which is right underneath the Joycean Shrine, and then make my way to this light route over here. From this light route, if we head just a little bit northwest, you're going to be able to see some stall horses over here. I'm going to go ahead and grab one just to make our trip over there a little bit easier and we don't have to deal with the gloom as much. Now that we have our stall horse, I'm just going to start heading in that direction, and if there's anything interesting, I'll let you know. Right next to this light route is a frox. Those are fun to deal with. Do I have any weapons that are good right now against ore? I have a rare stone talus sledge, but I would really like a two-handed. No? Okay, we're going to skip him for now. Yeah, even in complete darkness, this was a, a, a fairly straightforward trip. Going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Now that we went ahead and illuminated this light route, if you look just to the north of where this light route is, you're going to be finding this large brown shape. This is going to be our final destination. I think there's a, I think there's a Lionel around here somewhere. Oh, there he is. He's over there. Is he a blue? Oh, he's a regular Lionel. Okay, not going to waste my time with that. This was just a very short horsey trip over. And once we make our way to our destination, you're going to be finding out that this is the Plains Bargainer statue. He's very large, much larger than the one at Lookout Landing. If we climb to the top, you're going to see that we have the prey option. Let's go ahead and speak with him. You who stand before me, make an offering. Offer pose to me, spirits that ought to return to the afterlife. Good, evil, 
That's the futile perspective of narrow-minded beings. There is no such distinction in wandering spirits. I take it you have encountered my brethren. Stay a moment. My brethren and I have combined our power to create the Tunic of the Depths. If this is the second Bargainer statue that you've spoken to, you're going to be able to get the Tunic of the Depths, which is right here, at a cost 150. Also, after you unlock your second Bargainer statue, you're going to be able to repurchase any of the Amiibo clothing that you may have either scanned in from Amiibos or that you have found in the game in the depths. In addition, there's also magic rod scepters and staffs, but mostly is that amiibo clothing. So even if you scan it in and then sell it and then find it in game and then sell it, you can still get it again at the price of 400 pose per piece. So no worries about that in the future. Isn't that nice? I'm gonna go ahead and get ourselves the tunic of the depths. Also a little note that I was gonna save for later, but there are people who may just click off right now. Just to let you know, you don't have to come back to this bargainer statue. Once you speak to a statue once and you go to that transaction screen, you're going to be able to access his inventory from any of them, including the one at Lookout Landing, which is obviously what I'm gonna recommend. Our next bargainer statue is going to be at the Wellspring of Wisdom. The Spring of Wisdom is the spring that's right outside of Mount Lanayru Skyview Tower, and in the depths is the Wellspring of Wisdom. So, from the Mount Lanayru Skyview Tower, you want to make your way inside of the Nadra Snowfield Chasm, and then from the Nadra Snowfield Chasm, we're going to make our way for exact reference of where his face is going to be. It's going to be this star icon right here, if you would like to mark it down, or if you would like to mark it down, it's just ever so slightly south of the tower while on the surface. So if you mark this location, you're gonna find our boy. Unfortunately, with how spread out these light roots are, you would have to go all the way to this one down here in the depths in order to actually get this area illuminated. So we are gonna be doing it the old fashioned way with a whole bunch of bloom seeds. Once you actually make your way into the chasm, if you're like me and you already got the glide tights and you upgraded them to level three, I definitely recommend using them every time that you make your way inside of a chasm, especially if it's dark and you don't exactly know where you're going. All we have is sort of a direction in which we're going. I know it's somewhere this way, but honestly, I can't see anything. And luckily for us, I know for a fact that underneath Mount Lanayru is a very large depression. If we just keep heading forward, uh, altitude is just going to keep going down and down, and there's not going to be any climbing involved. So while you're flying, just the occasional seeds to illuminate your path. Wow, that is really, really far down. And here's the Lanayru Canyon Mine. And right next to the Lanayru Canyon Mine is going to be right here, the Wellspring of Wisdom. And while you're at this area, you may notice that there's a very large brown rock structure amidst all the regular rock structures, this is the actual bargainer. He is very large. So you're gonna find a few places that you can ascend over his body until you eventually get to the top. And here he is. His altitude is minus 858. And for reference, that's the Wellspring of Wisdom, that's the Waterfall. If you have the Zora armor, you could probably just glide on up here, no problem, easy peasy. The additional Bargainer statues always have the exact same text, except for their combined power, which is going to be creating another piece of armor. For us, is going to be the Dark Trousers. Here's the Dark Trousers, it costs 200 pose as opposed to the Dark Tunic, which is 150. And that's your reward for finding three of the Bargainer statues. So next up is going to be the Wellspring of Courage. If you're not familiar, the Spring of Courage is located right here in Farron, right by uh, all these various dragon names of lakes and rivers, all the way at the very end. This tiny little bit of water is gonna be the actual Spring of Courage. But in order to get there from the underground, we're gonna be going from the Poplar Foothill Skyview Tower into the Hills of Balmer Chasm. From the Hills of Balmer Chasm, we're gonna be heading just a little bit south to this first icon. I'm gonna place these on the surface so that it's a little bit easier for you to navigate in case you don't have the light routes active. From here, you're gonna head just down and to the right. Then there's gonna be a whole bunch of mess of stuff in the way, and then eventually we're gonna make our way here, which is essentially right underneath the dragon's nose. However, one of my first objectives is making sure I activate this light route right here. 
If you mark to these paths, just like I did, we're going to be marking the exact same paths in the underground. That way we know where we're going. Now, I do want to say that the location that we are going to is just south of a place that's called the Construct Factory. And if you know what the Construct Factory is, then you already have this illuminated and it's just south of that. If you don't know what the Construct Factory is, then you're going to be doing this path that I just explained. Alternatively, so that your pins show up on your map, you may choose to do these pins, in which case I always like to do my path being red, green, blue, yellow. And upon making my way to that light route, we're going to be illuminating the area that does include to the north of us the construct factory right here. But to the south of us is going to be this large figure, and we're going to be making our way to the very bottom of him. So to that blue marker right there. For reference, right on top of the dragon. However, if we look at the changes in terrain, we can see that we do need to climb quite a bit or maybe there's a nice convenient place to ascend. Oh, great. Here's our different colored rock. That's how we know we're at the right place. Here's his body. And we just need to make our way to the front and we'll be good. Oh, yeah, I could even see the platform over there on the right. Perfect. If you trust make sure you put the exact coordinates of these guys on screen. And this being our fourth, we are now going to get the Gators of the Depths as being an option that we can purchase for 200 pose, which is the pants. It's 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 pants of the depths. Cool. You probably already have a good idea on the next one that we're going to be going to, which is going to be right here. We have the Spring of Wisdom and underneath that we have the Wellspring of Wisdom, which is where we need to make our way to. Luckily for us, there's going to be a light route and a chasm right next to us, the East Akala Plains Chasm. So you can make your way right on over from the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower into the East Akala Plains Chasm. And then we're going to be heading north and going up this way right to the spring. Fun little visual representation of that's the spring that we're going to, but after we go through this hole. <laughs> as soon as we make our way down, I can see the light route that I already activated. This is the one that's right next to Tarrytown, I believe. And we're just going to be heading off into that direction. If you maintained your altitude, you're actually at kind of an advantage here because we're going to need to make our way from this sort of platform, which is one of the highest points that you could be with the water to your left. From landing right here, you can actually land yourself on him. He's going to be this brown structure right here at the Wellspring of Power. So if you came in from that hole, chances are you could land directly on him right here. And this being our fifth one that we've unlocked, we now have access to the Dark Hood, which is the Dark Link Mask at 300 pose. Not including the great abandoned central mine bargainer statue that I just need to go speak to him after completing the quest. There's going to be one more for us to get, and that's going to be right underneath the Forgotten Temple. If you've already unlocked the shrine down here, which I have it because I'm going to be doing a video on the, uh, the geoglyphs, and that's part of the geoglyph quest line, then this location is going to be the light route that we need. And then even from this light route, which is going to be a very high altitude, you need to go significantly higher to reach him, like to the point that you may want to do a hot air balloon higher. Your most convenient chasm is going to be right here, right next to the Tiflo ruins. And then from the Tiflo ruins, you can make your way down to this shrine, the Kikikin. But the Kikikin is actually lower in altitude. So because of that, I'm going to re-go from the tower into the chasm, main is, maintain as much altitude as I can to either get to this marker, this marker, or this marker in order of RGB, red, green, blue. Green is going to be the best, but he is very high up. His altitude is... I didn't write it down. Okay, cool. Well, the good news is future Austin, who's editing this video, is going to be able to put the altitude on there, right? So as I said before, we're going to try to make our way to the red. Green being better, blue being best. I could see the light route up there. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, about the height. This is going to be a climb. Okay, we have a very, very high ascent right now. So I'm going to use this opportunity to put down a save because I'm going to build something. And in case it doesn't work, I don't want to waste my parts. And this is my last balloon. I have pre-saved already. I have pre-saved already a blueprint of a hot air balloon and a flame emitter with a 4x4 piece of wood, which I don't have otherwise. I'm going to get rid of 
my rock on my stick and drop my stick down. And we're going to go ahead and attach it onto here. I should have really saved this with a torch built in. Great. Now even when the flame emitter is not on, the thick stick is still going to remain on fire and that's going to make sure that the hot air balloon does not lose altitude if I have to turn it off. And worst case scenario, we just reload. We are definitely gaining altitude. Where to? It's hard to say exactly. How about we illuminate the wall? Oh, yep. We are going right up against this cliff. Oh, nope, no, no. Please turn back on. The Cliff Bargainer statue. And fantastic. You could probably see a hooded figure in the background. That's where we're going. This is the Cliff Bargainer statue. Our height right now is minus 296, which is actually so high up that it's responding to the shrine inside of the Forgotten Temple. That's how high up in altitude we are right now. The last Bargainer statue, for reference, I mean, there is no reference. Everything is so far away, it's 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 foggy. And with our sixth one unlocked, we now have access to the hood of the depths. This completes both of the outfits, the dark outfit and the depths outfit, which give you gloom resistance. Now, after I completed the quest line in the great abandoned central mine, I did not speak to the bargainer statue again. So let's head on over and back and talk to him. After finding your seventh and final bargainer statue, you're now gonna get access to the tunic of memories, which is just the champion's tunic. It is 100% the original champion's tunic. You may have already picked up the tunic of leathers from this game. If you read Zelda's secret diary, then uh, you know where that is. Here's this, it's not as powerful. It does not tell you enemy HP. There's no reason to get it other than nostalgia. And there's no reason for me to get it, especially right now when my pose are so precious when there's, you know, more valuable stuff I could get, like the Gators of the Depths and the Hood of the Depths. Now, when it comes to upgrading these pieces, level one is gonna require three deep fireflies. Level two is going to require three Frox Fangs and five Dark Clumps per piece. Level three is going to require three Obsidian Frox Fangs, 20 Zonite, and three Frox Fingernails. And the final level requires five blue-white frox fangs, ten large zonite, and three frox guts. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to go ahead and get this above level two. This is my much earlier testing playthrough where I already got it and I tried Poe farming, but I'm going to work on it. I may have a follow-up video tomorrow on that. The difference between getting it from level zero to level two for the set bonus is you're going to get a bonus gloom heart in the corner that's now four, and now you also have something called gloom attack resist gloom attack resist is going to make it so that if you're hit with an attack that inflicts gloom damage those temporary hearts are going to be eaten up before your actual hearts and then they're going to regenerate over time keep in mind the base level only protects against you touching gloom or coming in contact with gloom as opposed to this that's actual gloom damage from attacks, whether it's from Lynels in the Colosseum or other things that you may encounter that inflict gloom damage, that's what that's for. When it comes to the dark set, that cannot be upgraded just like it was in Breath of the Wild. Oh, in regard to the Tunic of Memories, I got it to level two, and then I realized you don't see HP no matter what, so then I stopped trying to upgrade it. Level one requires three Silent Princess and a Light Dragon Scale. Level two requires three Silent Princess, a Light Dragon Talon, and two Feroche Horns. Yeah, not worth it. That's the reason I didn't find out the higher levels, or I didn't write them down. Uh, I wouldn't, 10 out of 10 do not recommend. Zero out of 10 do it. That is how you're going to be able to get yourself the Of The Depths outfit, as well as the Dark Link outfit in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, as well as the Bargainer statues and everything else that they sell. Great. If you guys found this information helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you want a guide on where to farm pose, that way you can go out and buy these outfits, let me know. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.